have either of you ever kind of came to a crossroads with what you really love doing mm -hmm. and it was a time when it was really hard and every sign was kind of telling you guys maybe you shouldn't be doing this or something but you kind of pushed through and you're grateful for um every day man every day really for me cuz you know when you when you do music you have to uh, figure out other ways to uh, to make money cuz starting out when you're doing thing anything with the arts you're usually spending more money than you're making you know until you get to a certain status so you know you always contemplate like you know is the money that I'm spending is it worth it to to get it back and then I have to tell myself certain things like you know people spend money on clothes and shoes and different things and and cars and I've never been really big into all of that so it's like if they can waste money on that and it definitely gets no return other than self-gratification I mean I can take the chance but yeah you, you definitely deal with that especially coming from a smaller town like music is really big in places like New York Atlanta Miami Los Angeles yeah. you know so in North Carolina people love music but it doesn't have a big music scene in terms of yeah, especially for hip hop, because, you know, if I can think about it, there's only been really one rapper from North Carolina that got big in North Carolina. And that just happened recently with the baby, because even even J. Cole, um, if if you're familiar with his story, is that he went to New York. Yeah, he went to school, I think St. John's and Queens or something. But then from there, he was able to build his brand. But it's like. North Carolina didn't fully embrace him first. Yeah. It's like New York and everywhere else embraced him. And then the small town people mm. in North Carolina claim him as their own now. Right. So, so my struggle is the, uh, the opposite end. I'm in North Carolina trying to make it in North Carolina. So therefore I'm trying to get North Carolina on my side. Mm. But because they don't have a history of, you know, having a lot of talent really getting to a certain status because I mean we have a lot of talent out here I don't I don't, I don't want to make it sound like you know people are trash out here there's a lot of talent out here not just you know me but because we're so small everybody feels like it's every man for himself so you have the dynamic of number one the other artists not wanting to support you because they feel like it takes what little bit of shine they're already getting away from them. Yeah. And then because it's such a smaller uh, area, people that know you and grew up with you, even though they may enjoy your music, they don't want to feel like, quote unquote, that they're on your nuts, mm -hmm. you know, so they won't share your music, yeah. you know, like they would somebody they don't know. Yeah. So you'll, you'll realize that your biggest supporters are always going to come from people that don't know you mm -hmm versus people that do know you yeah. because they don't have anything to gain so if they if they like your music and say that they like it it's like that they're, they're not getting anything in return they don't know you so they're that's a legitimate comment yeah. you know and they don't mind stating that because they don't know you but once once the personal value comes in it's like that mentality of like well i don't want people to seem like i'm on sales nuts so I'm, i mean i mean i i watch trips. the stories yeah. and i watch the video when it comes out but I'm not going to comment and like and, and things of that nature. And I, th I think that's really what prompted the, uh, the latest video mm -hmm. that you shot for me because mm -hmm. it, it stems from an actual conversation that I had with Jeremy um, in the gym where he was just like, man, you know, it's almost like you're too humble. Mm -hmm. You know, like you're, you're not the typical rapper outside of doing the music where you know, telling people that you're the best and this, that, and the other. And it's like, I see all these people online claim the best, so it's kind of like, either they are kind of nice, but I don't see the consistency, the level of consistency that you're doing, or they're claiming that they're nice and I listen to their music and it's just trash to me, you know? So, so that's what prompted the kind of lines and things that you hear in that video, yeah. so. That's good. Never had a moment like that where you felt like giving up but you're happy you didn't oh man too many to count 
I think those those times really determine like where you end up. You know what I'm saying? Um, and you know, like I said, I tried and failed for like ten years at Window Tent. You know, I'd fail. I'd I'd be like, man, maybe this isn't for me. You know, but it was that last decision where. You know, I had been working in security because I thought law enforcement was a path that I was supposed to go down. Boo. And, this, <laughs> and, and, you know, I had been in security for like four years at that time and tinting windows on the side. But, you know, I always kind of kept that plan B, like if window tint don't work, I, I can always do this. But, you know, I remember, and, you know, I tell this story all the time you know, riding in a security car one day, turning, making a right turn on uh, Fayetteville Road in Durham. And again, I had been struggling with that whole trying and failing thing. And in that moment, it's like I knew that the plan B or like going into law enforcement was not gonna fulfill like my soul. Mm -hmm. And like I started crying in the car. And uh, that kind of let me know, like the next time you start, tenting seriously mm -hmm. you can't quit yeah. and if you do you're giving up on everything that your heart's trying to lead you towards yeah. um and like i said it's, it's when you have that feeling it's it really determines where you end up you can succumb to it or like i did you know man up and go and get it mm -hmm. and you know i went from making half of what I can do now, you know, trying to juggle them both. You know, you don't realize sometimes your plan B, even a plan B being in the back of your mind can stifle your growth and really hold you back from actually doing what it is you're supposed to do. So sometimes having a plan B isn't the best plan at all. You know, it's going hard on plan A. So yeah, that's, that's definitely something I can resonate with.